Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest worked for justice during President Obama's administration and continues to fight for the fairness of all. Please welcome the Executive Director of the National Black Justice Coalition, David John. Yes. Yes. First of all, I'm happy can to we, have you. Can we talk about this shirt right Come here? On now. Yes. I love that shirt. I love that shirt. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the show. Uh, for those people who don't know, what is NBJC? Yes, I love y'all. Thank you for having me in this space. For those who don't know, the National Black Justice Coalition works to end racism and mm -hmm. homophobia. Mm -hmm. We are the nation's only civil rights organization intentionally and unapologetically focused on those intersections. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Good, good, that's good. Good. Now, how, how does this organization help to ensure the health and wellness of people, for people of color? Yep. Uh, so we folk, focus specifically on black people. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge that uh, a, a lot of the challenges that people of color face are compounded when you think about black people. Mm -hmm. um, and so we respond to that in three ways. One, we remind people that as long as there have been black people, there have been black LGBTQ, our mm -hmm. shame, gender loving mm -hmm. people, which is the term that I use. It centers our Africanness. Um, and two, we then highlight the challenges that often go unnoticed. A significant one among us is the HIV epidemic, mm -hmm. which since the introduction of it in the late 80s, uh, mm -hmm. continues to disproportionately affect black people. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. And I, I got to believe that a lot of that is because there are a lot of misconceptions surrounding uh, how is it actually transmitted. Can you talk a little bit to that for me, please? Yeah, definitely. Uh, a, a part of why those rates are as high as they are are because black people live in spaces where we don't have access to health care, mm -hmm. um, employment or jobs, the kind of resources one needs in order to be happy, healthy and whole. Uh, but the other part of that is the stigma surrounding the disease, right? Uh, and that's one of the reasons why shows like Polls are so important yes. because they mm -hmm. highlight uh -huh. the way that we transmit misinformation mm -hmm. about HIV. Mm -hmm. Things like you can get it from saliva mm -hmm. or kissing someone. Mm -hmm. Those are factually inaccurate. It requires the, the transmission of bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't talk about the fact that some people are born with it perinatally. Some people mm -hmm. contract HIV through intravenous drug use. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But then beyond that, we don't have enough conversations uh, with intimate partners mm -hmm. about our sexual health and wellness. Mm -hmm. We're not asking questions about uh, sexual practices are using condoms. If you're not using condoms, are you on PrEP? A pill that can reduce the likelihood of getting HIV, which so many black people just simply don't know about. Mm. Uh, so some of it is the stigma and getting away from the shame, uh, but some of it is also acknowledging that we have to talk more about the advancements in science and medicine. So how many people are we, how many people in the black gay community are we really talking about who could be potentially exposed? So specifically within the black gay community, everyone should know the CDC issued a stat uh, a couple of years ago that literally broke my heart and it said that every one in two men who have sex with men, that's the category that the CDC uses, wow. will become HIV positive in their lifetime. It is half of the men. Uh, uh, it, is, it is one because uh, black gay men continue to be disproportionately affected by the disease. Um, unlike privileged white people who have the ability to come out to move to spaces like Chicago or New York or LA, black people, black gay people live with other black people. Mm -hmm. We live in the South, we live in the states where it's still illegal to discriminate against mm -hmm. us, and we live in places where we don't have access to the information to doctors who are culturally competent, and then the resources, right? Can I ask you a question? Yep. Do you also think that that's a little bit uh, dealing with uh, being promiscuous? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. So let's so. clean this up, let's and I'm glad it. you asked we, the question. I, I got a lot of real uh, No, no, I appreciate right. it. Let's yeah. have the real talk. So many people assume that HIV uh, rates are as prevalent as they are in the black community because we're Especially having... Especially the black gay we're males. Ha black gay men in particular, but we also have to highlight black trans women mm -hmm. who are lumped into the category mm -hmm. of black gay men. Mm -hmm. But black heterosexual women are significantly impacted by Come HIV. Yes. In 2015, 25 percent of all HIV infections, new cases were women. women. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amongst that population, 60 percent were black women. Mm -hmm. The next closest but population is 19 percent, and that's oh Latino women. So is, is it, it, why are we being affected at this high of a rate? Right. Are yes. we not protecting ourselves? Are we trusting men too much who may not be telling a, a, a full disclosure mm -hmm. of their sexual lives? Mm -hmm. What, what it exactly? Indeed, it is all of the above. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, it is one, we don't have the language, and nor do we provide women space, which is why I'm an unapologetic feminist. Uh, to have those conversations, to say to your partner, who are you having sex with? How are you having sex? Are you using intravenous drugs? Are there things that you are doing that expose me to things that otherwise make it risky for me? That's one part. So the second thing is oh, we don't even no, no. talk about bisexuality or what it means for yeah. us to acknowledge that sexuality is fluid. Yes. So that is a part of the conversation mm -hmm. as well. But the last thing is we simply don't get tested. Mm -hmm. We don't even talk about testing. We will acknowledge a day, but we don't talk to our friends and do the like, we might now say mental health, are you good bro, are you good sis? But we're not saying, when's the last time you've been tested? Can mm -hmm. 
can mm -hmm. I go get tested with mm -hmm. you? Yes. Can I stand with you and help you find the kind of support you need in order to be holistically healthy? Do you believe that that is because a lot of us are very embarrassed of what the outcome may be, especially when you're looking to self or someone to come and morally support you? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's like, oh, do I want, what if, what if I get a, a bad news in front of this person? And then, and then when you know, I get that the, bad news, the bad what do news I do is with not it? knowing, yeah. right? Come on, uh, that's good. We, we that's now live good. at a point in time with based on the science, the medicine, and the power of community and support poor people can thrive with HIV. It is yes, no longer can. the death sentence that it was. Mm -hmm. And so if we are embarrassed by anything, it should be that we are still allowing people to die mm -hmm. when we don't yeah, have to. And black and brown people in particular. I also want to highlight, like, each of us have something that we don't want to talk mm -hmm. about with an intimate partner. For some people, it's the amount of student loan debt they have. Mm -hmm. For some people, it's the mental health issues in their family. Mm -hmm. There's always something. Yeah, but, but we exist to try and equip people with the language and the skills to create brave spaces where we can talk about things that are otherwise uncomfortable but literally can save lives. So no. what can a heterosexual female do to protect herself outside of using protection, of course? Because even last night when I was out, a, a guy introduced himself, said he was my husband, then I get no, oh girl, he's gay real gay. So I, I had no idea who he was, and I was just being me, a dating female, yeah. without, and, and it came to me. I didn't invite it. Yep. So what are we supposed so, to do? So let's, we're... let's unpack that. Uh, regardless of his sexuality or sexual yeah. practices, one, abstinence is the only way to completely pre prevent against this. Two, condoms mm -hmm. are uh, a way to reduce uh, a risk. The third thing is to ask somebody for their status, mm -hmm. and, and we can keep it real all the way hood. Ask them for their papers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Come on, right? Right. We're in a space now receipts. where people, I want receipts. receipts I want to see the last Sonny. time you were tested receipts. so we can do this together. That okay. is the surest way to be protected. Mm -hmm. The other thing that you should consider is PrEP, pre-exposure uh, pre, uh, prophylactic. It is a pill. Um, I take it every single day, and it significantly reduces the likelihood that I will contract HIV. So is that, let me ask you this, is that like a vaccine? Because I, I really want, we, we were talking about this in the green room, and we were talking about PrEP. Is that like almost giving your body the actual pill to prevent you from... It is not a vaccine in the way that we think about the flu. What it does is it blocks the part of the body that is otherwise receptive to the HIV virus. So it is preventative. But, but it is also a part of a holistic regimen where one should go and get tested every three months, where one should not be engaged in otherwise reckless behavior. Uh -huh. um, we have to note that while PrEP is reducing HIV uh, infection, we all have seen increases in other sexually transmitted infections like gonorrhea and syphilis, which also they can increase the, the likelihood of getting one HIV. One more quick question, and I'm not going to ask anything <laughs> else. Um, now, with this PrEP, I have a lot of gay friends, and yeah. I goes up for mine. I, I'm down. I appreciate I'm just, it. You know, mm -hmm. so, Everybody you know, does. I'm going to let you ask you something, but let us be clear. We, the HIV is it's not, not a gay, gay disease. disease. Right. 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 It is not a gay disease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if you're having sex, you're susceptible to getting it. Absolutely. If you're having sex, that's everybody. Yes. Yes. Come on now. It's not only sense. that, right. but also if you're using intravenous drugs, yes. use that is another yeah. significant yes, challenge in our community. Or if you're born, because if you if you're you get a parent early, early. Early. your mother is positive, I just want to know one question. How long, once you start the PrEP, how long do you have to take it? I've heard you have to take it for the duration of your lifespan. Is that true? PrEP is a daily pill. And if you are... For the are, duration of your lifespan. If, if you are engaging in the kind of intimate relationship where HIV HIV exposure is a chance. You should take it for as long as you need to. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, this you. is all That's amazing, all important information. I'm so glad you are here. Uh, mm -hmm. For more information on free testing in your area, go to nbjc.org. Stick around for what the people say. Oh my goodness, Mr. David Jones. Yes. Thank you.